Hey, Billy with PowerCore360 here this morning with Earl Gerlach. Earl is the PGA Director of Instruction at Collindale Golf Course here in Fort Collins, Colorado. And today we're going to talk about the golf swing. It's springtime. It, the golf swing can be stressful to the body. If you hang around to the end, I'm going to show you a two-minute routine that you can do at the golf course. Probably help you hit the ball a little further, maybe a little straighter. Certainly will save maybe your back and shoulder. So Earl, hey, it's spring. The sun's out. What's going on at the golf course? We have seen a ton of people at the golf course recently. Everyone's excited to pick their clubs up uh, after a long winter. And whether it's been all winter or maybe you haven't uh, picked up a club just that day, I see a lot of people, um, even people who are in very good shape, uh, who are not in great shape to be able to swing the golf club. So I see a lot of tightness in shoulders. I see a lot of tightness in hips. Um, being able to create you know, speed and power and consistency in our golf swing is really, really dependent on how prepared our body is to play golf. And one of the things that, you know, we want to help people with is not only with their golf swing at Collindale, but also with their body as well. Awesome. Earl and I are both TPI certified. So we both come at from, we play golf, we do the strength conditioning side. We really try to integrate it to help performance and avoid injuries. And when we're talking about injuries, we're really talking about, Earl mentioned it, we're trying to prepare the back, shoulders, and hips. Those are three primary areas of, that the golf swing that need to, to need to work correctly for your golf swing to work correctly and to avoid injuries. Um, flexibility, strength, and endurance are really key. And I'm going to always talk about golf specific because you can go to the gym and you can do a lot of general things that may or may not carry over into the golf swing. I'm always going to be very targeted to very specific types of golf activities. Before heading to the course, ideally it's spring, it's March, uh, almost April. Uh, ideally, it'd be best that over the last couple months you've been doing some kind of golf specific program. The reality is, I'm sure not everybody that's showing up over there now has, has done that. So it is what it is. Maybe best case is then right now, when you get to the course, warm up when you get there. Spend a few minutes, warm up there. And once again, if you hang around a couple minutes, we're going to show you some of the top exercises, a two minute routine to do that. But let's assume you've got there, you've done some warm up activities, that's all good. Um, now I get ready to grab a club. What should happen there? Yeah, I, I love starting with a much shorter club. Um, the swing speed is much lower. Our body is able to adjust to the balance and the mobility of actually swinging the golf club. So I love starting with something much, much shorter, starting with some good smooth tempo swings, um, maybe even some half swings with a sand wedge or a pitching wedge, something like that. And then sort of progressing up through your bag, maybe nine iron, then seven iron, then maybe five iron, and then moving on maybe into taking some longer swings with the driver. So something that I see a lot of times when people do when they get to the golf course, what do they do? They pull out the big dog, right? Like that's the one that has the biggest head. Maybe they haven't played all winter. That's the one that maybe seems easiest to hit. But the thing is, is that if your body, certainly if your body's not properly prepared to play, but even if it is to prepare your golf swing, talking about tempo, talking about contact, Love starting on that shorter end of your bag, sand wedge, pitching wedge, and then moving up through as you go. Maybe two to three to four swings a piece, um, or rather maybe a couple of more in that shorter side of the bag, sand wedge, pitching wedge. But then as you move up into your hybrids and your three wood and your driver, maybe just a couple of swings just to make sure that our body is prepared to go and play when we get to the course. So really extremely important point, and, and I get it. Everybody wants to hit the big dog. From an injury perspective, that's a great recipe. If you go and pull your driver out and don't do any warm up, you go to the first tee, you pull the big dog out and you take a big cut. Hey, a lot of the issues with injuries to the back in golf are flexibility issues. And if you've sat there all winter and you haven't done anything, those muscles are tight. Now I'm gonna take a driver out. It's high velocity, high speed movement on a short, tight muscle. Great way to jack up your back. So um, <laughs> we're obviously trying to get you not to do that. But you're there, you've warmed up, you've followed that routine. Let's also talk about what happens after we've hit some balls or we've played our first round. I'm gonna tell you what happens with the muscles really simply. When they get fatigued, they shorten up. So at the end of the round, the back, the hips, the shoulder, the arms, whatever it may be, are tight. Um, my suggestion is you go home and do what? I mean, so important to have a good stretching routine, foam rolling routine when you get done playing. Um, if you've played a round of golf, 18 holes, um, you know exactly what Billy is talking about, the tightness in our backs and maybe even our hamstrings and our legs and our shoulders. And to go home and to be able to start to recover and to get some blood back into those muscles and to help them be ready to play the next time that we go is so, so important. So not only having a pre-round routine <clears throat> to prepare your body to play golf, but 
but also a post-round routine so that we can recover properly so the next time we go out to play we're equally as prepared if not more so so do what we're talking about and, and if you're really going to be good really want to play well this year and stay injury free so continue to play then after your routine do the stretch do the rolling and then try to get into a golf specific kind of a program before your next outing all right here we go two minute routine I'm going to show you my three favorite exercises that I like to do and I like to see other people do at the range. So the first one's going to target the shoulders, the back, and we're going to use a club. And essentially I'll stand, I'll grab a club, and this is going to work the shoulders, and believe it or not, it actually works on my lower back and your lower back. I'm going to take a club and nice and slowly, I'm just going to rotate with the club, nice and slow, 10 times forward, 10 times backwards, and I'm doing both arms. When I do that, it warms up the shoulders, and once again, it stretches muscles up and down the back, okay? That's number one. Number two, a slow turn and hold. So if I was working with Earl and he was taking me through a, a golf lesson, basically, uh, it's not atypical for your teaching pro to get you in this kind of position. We cross the arms. We're gonna go to the top of the backswing. So as we're doing this and we're staying stable, it's a slow movement get to the top of your backswing, most injuries occur at the end ranges of motion. So that's gonna be at the top of the backswing. So instead of just going there and blowing through it, we're gonna take it maybe and hold that five seconds. And then we're just gonna go through the golf swing, go our lower body, we're gonna to get to our finished position. Also the other area where those back muscles might be tight, hip muscles, shoulder muscles may not allow you to get there. Get to where you can get, don't force it, hold it five seconds and breathe. And I want you to do that three to five times, right? Okay, that's number two, last one easy swing. So now pick up your club. You probably not even got a ball down because once again, this is going to take less than two minutes, but just take a club and start going through generally that motion from the top of your backswing down through. And if you're a right-handed golfer, don't just work on right to left. You're trying to warm up and prepare the body. Take some left-handed swings, go the opposite direction with it, right? Work both sides. That's it for today. Hope you liked it. Stick around. Come back next week and we're going to show you some more information, dig a little bit deeper into some of these areas. If you like this video, please like it down below. If you want further information on PowerCore360 products, go to PowerCore360.com. Appreciate it and see you next time.